You done good, old girl. Harvest is over. You didn't let me down. It's time for a break.
got beans up to here. And there's, there's quite a few splits in there. A lot of splits. Huh. I just think they are too dry. Tell you what, this light's nice right here. So, there, it's up to the cross auger about a foot over. I'm gonna say that might be about 60 bushel off of an acre and three quarters. So, I guess that ain't too bad. We'll just let her empty out here. Check out these front lights. Fancy. Got a side light over here. Only light I have left to wire in is a bin light. I got it mounted, I just didn't get it wired in yesterday. And I was taking beans off today. Oh, and I gotta fix my uh, chain that drives the reel it come off the last 25 feet but luckily it was just a little single row of beans from where i had split the uh the big row and uh i, I didn't worry about it so we got her done i gotta do the filled out back uh later this week so i'll try to get better footage when i'm doing that so we'll catch you then
it's time for an alternator for the combine, which I knew it needed. But I was just running with the uh, bright LED bars on the front because the lights started going dim. Well, I shut them off so I could kind of see where I left this last little bit that you guys can't see at all. I have the two headlights on. And uh, we're, we're combining in the dark. So I shut the lights off to uh, kind of see where it needed to be and the LED light bars will turn back on. They all got enough juice. I can see pretty good, sort of. You guys can't see nothing, but we're at the last five feet. And we are done with feet. I gotta, I could probably find my way to the house better without the lights on. That's how it Oh, there you guys can see the headlights a little bit. Yeah, the, the side lights and the back lights will turn on, but the light bar is up front. So, I want to drive her back up to the house in the dark. She is oiled and greased and ready for corn. I had to change that idler sprocket and one underneath because they wouldn't turn at all. They're barely turning, but I think that's because they're really oiled up. That one is anyways. Um, that bearing and pulley come apart on me. So I uh, put it back together. I uh, marred up the surface of the pulley a little bit and put the bearing back in it and hopefully that uh, stays where it's supposed to. If not, I think I'm going to have to change the bushings and stuff in that arm because I think it's tracking off just a little bit. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're ready for corn. So, we're going to get this thing shut down and move on down the road and do some corn.
There's all the corn that we got off the uh, twin row planted stuff. It's probably three bushel, four bushel maybe, be my guess. Um, all that stuff, the ears were really small and most of them were going through the combine. This is interesting. They're going through the uh, head. So there'll be a lot of volunteer corn. See all the weed seeds and the corn on there. It's doing an alright job shelling. We get an ear every once in a while that's got some corn on it, but there's a lot of corn on the ground and I think it's coming from the head. I mean we got a few there but they're small ears so maybe we get into this stuff a little bit bigger ear it'll work out a little bit better so yeah I haven't checked the moisture yet I'm gonna do that here in a second but I'm gonna go at some more corn Okay, there is the corn off the last the two other strips and as you can see there's about three to four times the amount um, that was in them twin rows Them twin rows were a huge fail but it's coming out pretty clean the ears are a little bit bigger so everything's going pretty decent right now I gotta get off every so often and Check. Still got some that aren't selling completely. But I'm real nervous about this pulley. So I keep getting out to check it every so often. But I mean we're getting mostly complete shellage. When she's loaded up, she's shelling pretty good, so not a lot on the ground through here, so that's that's good. We're doing good. We're going to keep going.
got some drone shots for you guys. Uh, I'm gonna put that to music more than likely. Uh, it's getting dark, so I can't really fly the drone anymore. It won't work right. So, I guess you'll just get what you get. Well, we made it through harvest, but just barely. I just finished getting all the corn off, and you guys probably can't tell, but the lights are really dim, which means my battery's going dead, which is about right. We, uh, we got fluid leaking everywhere on the combine. I started to lose power steering. It's leaking through the power steering system. It's leaking on the valve block. The cylinders are leaking. Um, we got a vibration in it. I think that's the snubber bushings that are on the engine making that happen. It's just the old gleaner. The harvest was hard on her this year. Um, it was hard on me too, man. Even though it was only about 12 acres, 13 acres, somewhere in there, that we harvested, it felt like I've done a few hundred acres. And the poor gleaner probably felt like it's done a thousand acres. But it's done. We will uh, talk more about harvest here after a little bit in the video. I uh, need to get this combine blown off get the corn put away it feels like it's kind of sprinkling but there ain't a cloud in the sky and it ain't supposed to i'll show you how poor the corn did and we'll talk about that but let me get everything put away first okay things are put away for now that's about all i could do to get this stinking wagon in here when i backed it in here with beans it took me a while but i got it in here in a perfect manner and for some reason I could not get it in here the way I usually do. Half the problem is I got all this crap outside the doors on each side where I need to swing the tractor. I need to get rid of this crap. Most of this stuff's for sale right here. It just hasn't gone yet. You guys can't see it because it's dark. But let's talk about the corn. So the beans, we did about six acres of beans and they averaged 30 bushel of the acre. So this is all the corn off of right about six acres. A little over five and a half, I think what it figures up to. Yeah, this wagon I think is 200, 250 maybe bushels. It's not full. If I leveled it off, it wouldn't even fill the first ring. Yeah, it's got it's fairly clean. I can't even reach it. Fairly clean. I got to get 
on the gleaner there is some fingers that cover the fan on each side to keep the trash from getting in there it kept sucking up trash with the uh, in the fans is where that trash come from so more stuff we can add to the gleaner parts list it uh, it's gonna try I'm gonna try to have it live its life in the, the corner over here um, this corn planter needs to get done I have now that harvest is over I'm going to have time to move stuff I want everything with an engine to live inside and, and somehow manage to keep this corn planter in here so we can work on it too I want to use that next year it needs probably about twelve hundred dollars worth of parts to get it going and uh, be able to use it next year if, if all else fails all I have to do is I have to buy a no-till coulter for it I broke one of the hubs I could put it back together and I could probably run it I need to narrow it up I mean that's at a minimum I'm gonna have to do that so I'm gonna have to strip it all down anyways it's just it's one of them things I was really excited about doing it now I've lost my excitement and it just needs to get done about everything else I do around here it's the same way uh, the combine now that harvest is over I can relax on it it needs it needs work the old girl's showing showing her uh, age and the fact that it hasn't been used in a while so it's only taken it three years to start really falling apart <laughs> I mean can we say that it's falling apart when it probably was really never together it I did all that work to it and, and I'm gonna have to do more work to it I thanks thanks cleaner thanks but it is what it is so I will I'll try to I might get a shot of taking this to the elevator when I take it and then I can give you guys the moistures and stuff and then we can probably wrap up the harvest video it's probably what we we'll do probably be a couple days this should be all right sitting in here it was at 17 percent when I combined it so it should should be all right I could probably I might be able to get it to the elevator tomorrow honestly depending on how my work schedule goes they're open till five we got off at three today well I was gonna get off at three we had had to help somebody that had a little mishap and we didn't leave till four so yeah get her in be done with harvest reflect on how we're gonna do stuff next year so the reason this corn did so bad and it's all my own fault I'm it's not the corn's fault I mean there was probably about three acres worth made this um, so I planted conventional corn this year just just to try it I had a bug up my butt about wanting to do conventional corn I was going to get my pesticide applicators license so that way I could spray the restricted chemicals the restricted use chemicals and uh, you know really get the weed population down and I didn't get that they never got sprayed they got cultivated I didn't do any fertilizer I mean this corn this is about as organic as you can get without being organic and it shows I mean there's people that do organic corn that I mean have really they got her figured out I on the other hand do not have it figured out and this is probably the worst crop of corn I had the first crop of corn I ever did I didn't combine I hired it out I think we did like 300 bushel no was 475 off five and a half acres my second crop of corn was what I harvested last year with the gleaner it was the gleaners first corn that was like 75 bushel to the acre it was not quite this wagon full and then I put some in the other wagon it probably would have been this wagon full so I think it was right around 250 bushel and this year is it's bad so but I I don't have anybody to blame but myself 
and uh, next year next year we're going to change some stuff this is going to be the last harvest like this <laughs> I hope at least I'm going to do all that I can to make it the last harvest like this. Uh, next year, I want to raise at least 45 bushel acre beans. I want the weeds managed in it. And I want to raise at least 100 to 150 bushel corn. Minimal weeds in it. I'll allow for some weeds in there. but And the crazy thing is, the corn did the best in the spots that had the grass growing in it from when I tried to plant the field of hay years ago. Well, been a couple years ago. I don't know if the grass had something to do with that. If that's where all the moisture lays in the field. I don't know. But those spots did the best for the corn. So, my, my biggest ears were probably like that long and that big around but most of them were the little nubby things and half of them went through the grain head and the corn was about a foot tall in some spots and a lot of it didn't even make ears so it pitiful I'm really <laughs> really disappointed in myself and the corn crop this year but it has put a motivation a drive into me to try to do way way better um, next year where the corn was there will be soybeans there um, this hay field out here should have corn in it there will be corn in our test plot and then the field that I had in corn last year that was in the beans this year that will be in corn so I'm gonna try a couple different corn varieties I want to try like a heritage corn um, and then I'll probably do that I'll either do that right here in this plot because this has been in hay so there should be some nitrogen there um, there's a corn it's, it's Tommy something I think there's a guy on YouTube Doback or Doback Seeds he's out of Michigan and funny enough I sold the tires to uh, from the M2 to this guy and he uh, I seen him on a BAME Farms video after I sold the tires to him they talked about him and I looked him up and found he's got a channel and he mainly sells I think this one variety of seed but it's like a scavenger kind of corn it'll scavenge for nitrogen but I sold him the tires from the M2 for his corn picker that he uses to harvest the seed corn so that's kind of a interesting connection I guess you could say I he and I remember him telling me that he grows seed corn and some stuff but it's been a while ago so but I want to try that and then I might try so I, when I do when I did my corn the first time I just did a roundup ready corn last year when I did the corn it was a roundup ready corn this year was a conventional corn I think next year we might step it up a little bit and go to like a middle of the road variety of corn something with some traits in it maybe two modes of action or so to kill weeds I don't know we're gonna I'm gonna have to do some research this winter um, if I have my corn seed ordered before crisp, no, before New Year's, I can get like $50 off a bag. So that's what I did this past year. I only had $300 in corn instead of $300 per bag of corn. So, yeah. But anyways, before this drags on too long and I shake you guys to death, I'm sure you're tired of staring at this wagon, but we will catch you guys probably taking us to the elevator so see you then